Welcome back to the program. Liberal Democrat Senator David Lionhelm is one of the crossbench senators whose vote on contentious issues the government has been trying to woo. It hasn't always been successful. But on economic issues, he's preaching a hardline view on what fiscal medicine Australia really needs. And he joins me now. Senator Lionhelm, thanks for being with us. Now, I know you have been talking about this, but the budget is getting closer. And I just wondered, before we talk about your view, it's now eight days away. We know the, uh, the government razor gang is still meeting. Does it concern you at all about the state of the budget, that they're still deciding on things? This sort of close, really, to a very major document, a very major, really, policy statement by the government? Well, I think they're probably having a pretty strong internal debate about whether they go for a little bit of a cut or a more serious cut in um, expenditure. And they, I think they acknowledge that expenditure has to be cut. They're probably having debates about whether to increase taxes in a few areas as well. And there are, uh, there are a few in the government who think that's a good idea. And there are So these things have not been resolved and they're going to go to the wire? Is that your impression? Yes. I, it, it, in the end, I think the politics are driving it. Um, how much is it sellable? They did an appalling job last year selling their budget. Um, can they do it any better this year? If they go for something a little bit more adventurous, will they be able to sell it or will they get pilloried in the, in the um, public opinion? Those sort of debates, I suspect. So do you fear that, in fact, not much will be achieved in terms of what you want of reform? There will be very little of that in there, yes, very I, little cuts? The noises I'm hearing is that they've more or less given up on the Senate. And, which is a shame because they shouldn't. Uh, there, are, there are things that can be done with the Senate. But uh, they, they seem to have decided that um, it's all too hard and uh, we're not going to get anything through. And uh, so therefore uh, they should go for really safe options that um, aren't going to bring them into conflict with the Senate. Now, I think that's wrong. And I, pres I published a, an alternative budget last week that showed how I thought they could bring the budget back to surplus but um, I don't know that they're listening to me. Well, in fact, you were demanding the budget come back to surplus, surplus, you know, really immediately. Now, we've heard from Chris Richardson from Deloitte Access Economics today. That's an impossibility. I mean, he is saying the deficit is going to be worse this time uh, and then it will be worse again next year as well. Yes, I allowed for that in my budget and it would only, what I proposed would only bring it back to uh, uh, balance if things didn't get worse. And, and in, the, in the discussion I had, I said, well, if they do what we propose and it does get worse, at least we'll be on the right path. Uh, so what I suggested was, in fact, taking the savings out of the appropriation bills, which don't get blocked. They won't be blocked by Labor uh, or, the, uh, or the Senate. So uh, they could put these savings into the appropriations bill. Now, they wouldn't all be in the right areas. There's, there's, there's things that need cutting and restructuring to achieve savings that require specific legislation. That's where the problem arises, because getting that through the Senate is difficult. But we've got to stop borrowing money. It's costing us a fortune in interest costs just to service our debt. We've just got to start heading the budget back towards um, uh, balance. And we're basically we're saying, well, we're not going to pay for our current liabilities this, you know, in this lifetime. We're going to hand them on to future generations to pay for. It's appalling. So you are arguing for something like $30 billion worth of cuts mm. uh, just this time. We, we know that um, more than $20 billion are still stalled in the Senate. I mean, so you're asking for a lot more deeper cuts into foreign aid, into health spending, into industry assistance, into scientific research, aren't you? Some of those things are, are because they are doable via the appropriations. Some of the things that need doing, including a reduction in the subsidy for higher education, um, the tapering of the um, access to the pension, those sorts of things, they require specific legislation and they'll struggle with those. Well, they've but already the... struggled with what they proposed last year in the, Indeed. In the budget Indeed. on the like... higher education changes. They're going to have trouble with some of those, some of those ideas. But you could, for example, get rid of 15,000 public servants and reduce the salaries of the 200,000 uh, Commonwealth public servants that remain by 10% and save something like $5 billion just in that alone. Now, Commonwealth public servants are very well paid. 
their salaries have gone up way faster than inflation over the last decade or so. And the government did say before it was elected they would get rid of 12,000 public servants, public service jobs. They haven't done it. They've How got many of, have they got rid of? 2,000. They're squibs. They're absolute squibs. They, if they did what they said they were going but to that do... That was they... over a longer period of time, the 12,000. It wasn't in their first year in office. Uh, well, three years, I think, is what the promise was. Well, they're halfway there and they're not halfway through them and they're not going to get there either. Do you accept that there is criticism from many areas saying, and they're saying this to Joe Hockey, not necessarily to you, that if you cut too deeply mm. on the sorts of revenues that we've got now and the sort of growth that we've got, that there is a possibility that you push Australia into recession? Yeah. Well, that's, an, that's a, a proposal that I hear all the time from Chris Richardson. He's been saying that now for... Well, he's not the only respected economist who says that. Do you no. reject that? Well, I'm not an economist, but there are other respected economists who say if there is an economic downturn, it would be very small and very brief and that the private sector will move to fill in... How can you say that with certainty, that it would be very small and very brief? You, no, you admit you're not an economist. Yeah, well, no, what I'm saying is... The, the other respected economists who I, who I listen to as well are saying Chris Richardson is wrong, that it wouldn't be such a big shock to the economy. Um, I, there's no denying that if you stop spending a lot of money, if you're the government and you stop spending a lot of money uh, you know, immediately, um, it will be missed. But um, nobody disputes that we've got to get back to... Um, to a balanced budget and back to surplus. We've got to pay down our debt as we used to. We had no debt in, uh, when this go the, the Labor government took office. We've got to get back to that situation. We've got to head in the right direction. We're going to have to take measures that people don't like. We've got to start now and we get the pain over and done with and get back onto a you know, sustainable path. You, of everyone, knows they tried this last year. It didn't work. It wasn't accepted in the community. You, in the crossbench, on the crossbenches, you rejected a lot of their messages. Well, not not and, me personally. No, but yeah. you rejected a couple. Um, not, and not savings, I didn't. No, well, the higher education changes. You. No, I voted for that. I voted for that. I was arguing for uh, savings, greater savings, in the long term, in other words, I, what I wanted was for the HEX loan system to be more financially sustainable so it wasn't such a great cost to the, uh, to the taxpayer. And what I got was an undertaking from uh, Minister Pine um, that he would uh, make repayment of HEX loans a part of the consideration of how much universities receive. So in other words, their, right. their remuneration would and be somehow G linked. the GP co-payment? Um, I was the only senator, I think, that said, yes, I think that's a good idea. It, it was, the first version of that was clumsy, it was, was awkward, and uh, the second version I thought was clean and tidy and made sense, and I supported it. I think I was one, I think I was the only one, there might have been two of us that supported it. The, one, the second version. The second version. Well, I supported them both, but I liked the second one better. And, uh, but do you but I, didn't, I didn't like the medical uh, research fund. I didn't think that that made any sense. It was basically just a bribe to the medical establishment to say, let's not be too critical of this idea. All right. Do you think, though, you said at the outset that there are political considerations now. Do you think that is what's going to drive next Tuesday's budget? Yes, I do. Yes. The and government what will be is the very impact? jumpy. The government is very jumpy about appearing to be mean and mean and nasty. That's how they were painted last year. It, it wasn't a mean and nasty budget last year. It was uh, really quite timid, but they sold it extremely poorly. Now, if they had convinced the Australian public, look, this deficit issue is serious. Um, we can't keep borrowing. Um, all, all we're doing is running up these massive great debts, and it's not sustainable. We will head in the same direction as... Europe and Greece is at the worst end of that spectrum. Um, if they had spent a lot more time convincing the public of all that, I'm pretty sure that, that they wouldn't have been painted as mean and nasty. So this you think this fiscal medicine is really what Australia needs and oh. that they should do it this time? Yes, absolutely. If they, they won't do it next year because it'll be only a few months before an election. So, yeah, they, this is their last chance if they're going to head in the right direction. All right, I want to talk to you about you've put forward an immigration plan. It's already been criticised. Uh, in, in short, what are you after and why is there criticism already against it by mm -hmm. some, particularly in business? Yep. 
uh, in a nutshell, it's replacing uh, a quota system for, for admitting immigrants with a tariff system. So instead of a whole pile of public servants sitting there saying, well, we need more brain surgeons or hairdressers or, or motorbike mechanics or something like that, public servants are not all that good at working that sort of thing out. We would say, well, if you want to come to Australia, you want to live and work here, you pay a fee, and having paid that fee, you can come here. Now, we might put an upper ceiling on that so that we, you know, we have control over the total numbers, but anybody who pays the fee can come here. The proviso is they don't get any welfare, so it becomes an economic consideration. If you were uh, living overseas and you were thinking, I might like, I'd like to live in Australia and I'm prepared to pay the fee, but the question is, would I be able to work when I get there? Would I be able to look after myself? Does, does the paying the fee make economic sense in terms of the return you'd get from working? They, it then becomes a question of uh, um, you know, economic rationalism, if you like. Well, so it's a price tag on it's coming to tag. live in Australia. And, and does anyone else do this in the world? Well, America has a, a sort of a, um, a lottery system for its green cards, for 50,000 places for green cards. Um, there, is a, uh, uh, there is some sort of an auction system for some of their visas as well. Business doesn't like the idea on first blush, but that business is conservative and, and the difference between a conservative and a libertarian like me is conservatives like the status quo. They hate change. So come along with something like this, it's different, they say no. All right, you also want change on gay marriage. You are for it, you are putting uh, up a bill. Tanya Plibersek, as far as you're concerned, has complicated things for you? You don't support um, a binding vote on the ALP? Wouldn't that help you get your bill through? Well, we're not at that stage yet, um, no. And, uh, and frankly, from, from a libertarian perspective, the best thing is for the parliament to have a conscience vote um, entirely on this issue. No binding votes at all. It, at the end of the day, you don't really want to force people to vote against their principles. But um, what her move to make it a binding vote in the Labor Party will do is strengthen the arm of the Conservatives and the Liberals who don't want to have a conscience vote in their party room or amongst them. They will say, um, why should we have a conscience vote if Labor is going to move to a binding vote, why don't we stick, stick with a binding vote against? Labor Party can go with a binding vote in favour and it could be a good partisan issue and they can fight over it. That's not what we want, that's not what I want. I want it to get through, to win on the basis of a conscience vote because a majority of parliamentarians reflect a majority of Australians. The majority of Australians are quite relaxed about this. Not a high priority issue, but they're relaxed. If, right. if, if the MPs re reflect their, their constituencies, they'll vote for it. David Larnhelm, there are some difficulties with that in the suburbs and the regions, but I just want to ask you about one last issue. And Do you think uh, there is speculation that Tony Abbott might see what the reaction is to this budget and call an early election? Mm. What would you say to him about yeah. that? Yes, I've heard, I've heard similar mutterings. He wouldn't be able to do it at the moment because he'd lose. And um, there's nothing... If nothing else, Tony Abbott knows um, about winning elections. Uh, he is a fighter. So I don't think there's any chance that he would go to an election unless he was ahead in the polls. Now, will the budget pull him ahead in the polls? Time will tell. Um, I think that's certainly what his intention is. I think he would also like to uh, con continue this deal that they've been talking about with the Greens and change the Senate voting so that people like me can't get re-elected and, and they don't have to worry about troublesome crossbenchers anymore. But um, uh, he would perhaps like to call a double dissolution as well and get rid of us all. But he's going to have to be confident that he can win the election before, um, before that becomes a possibility. Um, I think it'll take more than a budget to win that. My suspicion is the Australian public is kind of out of love with, with Tony Abbott and it would take a fair bit to make them fall back in love with him. All right, David Lionhelm, good to get your views. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.